All of these shows prove that truth is often stranger than fiction. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most bingeable and insane docu-series ever. You're going to get hurt tonight. Right. You're going to get drowned. You're going to get buried. Somebody's going to die tonight. For this list, we're looking at documentary series that tackle larger than life and shocking subject matter, making for must-watch television. Please note, we are exclusively looking at docu-series, not documentary features or short films. As such, Longshot and Fire won't be considered, despite both making for an insane viewing experience. We will try to keep spoilers to a minimum, but some are inevitable. Number 10. McMillions Fair warning, there's going to be a fair amount of murders and mysterious deaths on this list. McMillions is an outlier in this regard. It's just about some good old-fashioned white-collar crime. And all I saw was McDonald's monopoly fraud with a question mark. And I go, what is that? But as the HBO series proves, blood needn't be shed to make an insane story. McMillions takes an in-depth look at a long-running case of fraud carried out between 1989 and 2001 by Jerry Jacobson. I do remember clearly uh, feeling like I was in New York and I was listening to a mobster talking about running his mafia empire, some mafia don, because that's kind of how this guy came off. As the head of security for the company handling McDonald's annual Monopoly game, he was able to steal the rarest property pieces and pass them along for a portion of the prize. This is a happy day. Not only is the premise compelling, but the way it plays out often veers into the realm of the absurd thanks to the odd characters involved. Number 9. Making a Murderer this was arguably Netflix's first mega hit of a true crime docuseries, inspiring countless imitators. And I mean, knowing her, I mean, what are your feelings for her parents and... They must be going through hell. Making a Murderer follows the story of Stephen Avery, a man who was wrongfully convicted of attempted murder and sexual assault. It appears that an attempt was made to dispose of a body by an incendiary means. He served 18 years for a crime he didn't commit. Then, just two years after his release, with his civil case pending against the county to the tune of $36 million, Avery once again found himself under arrest, this time for murder. Come back to reality here. I am. No, you're not. I did 18 years. You think I want to do any more? Across the first season of the series, we're presented with a riveting tale of questionable police work and an alleged frame-up. The second season doesn't pack quite the same punch, but is a worthy investigation of the U.S. legal system. They got our family all tore right apart. It's not right. Number 8. Wormwood From 1953 to 1973, the CIA ran a covert mind control operation called Project MKUltra. I ran into a couple of guys, uh, one who just left the CIA, who said, if you think Watergate's something, he's, in effect, he said, find out what we've been doing. That sentence might sound like something from a conspiracy theory Reddit thread, comic book, or sci-fi flick, but it is now a matter of public record. It confirms there was domestic spying on American civilians, unlawful wiretaps, the opening of private mail, even a drug testing program involving the use of LSD against unsuspecting persons. Of course, before it came to the attention of the masses, the vast majority of the documentation was destroyed by order of then-CIA director Richard Helms. And so, decades later, even armed with the surviving declassified documents, we are still putting together the pieces. You are in Fort Detrick, where some 600 military and civilian scientists work together in research at the Army Biological Laboratories to protect this country against a biological attack. In this six-part miniseries, documentary filmmaker Errol Morris explores the CIA's use of LSD, the suspicious death of scientist Eric Olson, and the enduring mystery of MKUltra. Number 7. The Pharmacist It's only a matter of time until this one gets turned into a biopic. It's that good. We were creating addicts all over this country. Purdue could have did things to stop this, but they saw the profits. In 1999, disappointed by apathetic police efforts, small-town pharmacist Dan Schneider took it upon himself to solve the murder of his son, who was killed while buying drugs. I started noticing a lot of kids around my son's age. 18, 19, 20, 25 year old, healthy people coming in with high powered opiate prescriptions. This quest for justice soon evolves, however, into a battle against the growing Oxycontin epidemic. Like something out of a crime thriller, this mild mannered pharmacist uncovers a trail of corruption and profit maximizing principles that goes all the way up to the top, implicating Big Pharma. Dr. Cleggett was putting these people straight to Oxycontin 40 milligrams. She never started them at reduced doses and then worked their way up. 
It's an incredible story, sure, but the docu-series also highlights the complexities of opioid abuse and the ways in which it ties into questions of poverty, addiction, and the American healthcare system. I'm now an only child. It's so different without him around. Number six, The Staircase. Though perhaps best known today as a Netflix original, the first season of this docu-series was released way back in 2004 under the French title Soupçon, meaning suspicion. What's wrong? My wife had an accident. She's still breathing. What kind of accident? She's still on the stairs. As fans of the true crime genre know all too well, these cases often span decades, and so subsequent episodes were released in 2013 and 2018 respectively. The Staircase follows the trial of Michael Peterson, an American novelist convicted of killing his wife Kathleen. The name of the series is taken from a staircase which Peterson claims took his wife's life. The forensic evidence, however, suggests a different cause of death. It just never occurred to Michael Peterson that people wouldn't believe him when he says she fell down the stairs. That's really what this is all about. The end result is a true crime thriller that's inspired countless theories and which people are still revisiting years later. Number 5. The Jinx – The Life and Deaths of Robert Durst the true crime genre is full of stories about people who went to jail for crimes they allegedly did not commit. Less common, however, are tales of suspected murderers who walk free despite being linked to the deaths of multiple people. God, the guy looks like a librarian. He doesn't look like a, a person that would dismember a human being. But getting such an individual to agree to be interviewed for a docu-series? That's almost unheard of. Why would a guy with $520 in his pocket and $37,000 in the trunk walk into a Wegmans and steal a sandwich. The guy is crying out to be arrested, isn't he? The Jinx explores the disappearance of Robert Durst's wife Kathy, as well as the murders of his friend Susan Berman and neighbor Morris Black. Durst was considered a suspect in all three. I am complicit in Kathy's not being here. We won't give away the ending, but unlike so many docu-series of its kind, this story actually has a relatively satisfying conclusion, with no shortage of twists along the way. Number 4. Don't f*** with cats – Hunting an Internet Killer Murder? Meet the Internet Age There's no mystery in this three-part Netflix original, but that doesn't make it any less compelling, bingeable, or disturbing. And so I was on Facebook one day and I found a post. A lot of people have been feverishly posting about a video. Don't f with Cats follows the rise to infamy of convicted murderer Luca Magnata from the perspective of a community of online sleuths. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person didn't buy a pack of cigarettes and then hop on a plane to Paris or, you know, Berlin, but I knew they were North American cigarettes. Magnata filmed himself killing a university student named Jun Lin and posted it online, subsequently becoming one of the most wanted men in the world. Hi, my name is Luca. Magnot is my last name, M-A-G-N-O-T-T-A. -T -T Before that, however, he's thought to have been behind a video involving the torture and killing of two kittens. That's the video that rallied an internet community, and this documentary is the story of how they tried to bring him to justice before he could kill again. That looks exactly like the Petro-Canada gas station that I see in the photo, Luca, and guess what? That large gray cement apartment building is directly behind it. Number 3. Evil Genius – The True Story of America's Most Diabolical Bank Heist Watch this docuseries at your own risk. You may never be able to enjoy pizza quite like you did before, or feel comfortable going to the bank. Brian Wells walked into the PNC Bank with a cane and the collar around his neck. We later learned that the uh, cane, it was actually a gun. This deadly robbery has to be one of the strangest crimes in American history. Evil Genius tells the convoluted story of Brian Wells, a man who, after completing a bank heist, was killed when the explosive device on the collar around his neck went off. We are hopeful that by showing a picture of the device, someone may have rec or may recognize the instrument. It's like something out of a comic book or the Saw franchise. Though the nature of Wells' death is indeed morbid, it's just one small piece of a complicated puzzle that will have you on the edge of your seat. Marjorie Deal, D-I-E-H-L. Okay, and Marjorie Deal is at that residence now? Yes. Who is she to you, sir? Uh, I'll give you guys my story later on. Number 2. Wild Wild Country Who's ready to take a trip down the rabbit hole? American history is made up of all manner of odd characters and strange chapters, but few can hold a candle to that of the Rajneeshpuram community. Now there are two ways. Either repress sex as it has been done by all the so-called religious traditions of the world, or transform it. 
Rajneesh. This controversial group, led by Guru Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, left India in the 1980s and settled in Wasco County, Oregon. Though the community seemed to center around sexual liberation, meditation, and dancing, Rajneesh was equally known for his love of material wealth. Beautiful city. Example for the universe. As the story progresses, the dream soon begins to unravel as tensions rise between Rajneesh Puram and the locals of Wasco County. Sheila, a former secretary of the Bhagwan Rajneesh, faces charges of fraud and attempted murder in Oregon. Bioterrorism, a Rolls Royce collection, power struggles, and questions of constitutional freedom. This documentary has got it all. When you have a basically unstable personality, coupled with tremendous power over enormous numbers of people, you have a potentially lethal situation. Actually, no. If you've seen these Stefan memes, our number one pick actually has everything. But I'll let you wait until after these honorable mentions to find out what the most insane and bingeable docuseries is. As if you don't already know. He confessed he's going to prison. Isn't that the way it works in America? Justice has been served. We're going to have her spend the rest of her life in prison. Competitions will start to happen. This is not just cheerleading. This is a sport. These really are athletes out here. Doug Coe is the longtime leader of the family. He's the most powerful man in Washington you've never heard of. He said the more invisible you can make your organization, the more influence it will have. They didn't treat him as a killer, but as a friend. Uh-oh, you got the handcuffs? <laughs> Henry never lived so good. Every day he brought him a strawberry milkshake. It was like he was a movie star. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tiger King – Murder, Mayhem, and Madness Wild Wild Country might have the word wild in its title twice, but when it comes to docuseries, it simply doesn't get any more wild than Tiger King. Come here, you sexy beast. Hi, little man. This explosively popular Netflix original series broke the internet in March of 2020, becoming a true cultural phenomenon. It's about big cat collectors, breeders, and conservationists. You're an animal rights person, and you try and come into this facility, this is what you're going to be greeted with. Specifically, it focuses on the bitter feud between Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin, two figures on opposing sides of the big cat debate. Carol Baskin's third husband. And they can't find his body. Okay, we believe that she fed him to the tigers. Both are wildly eccentric individuals, and as filmmakers Eric Good and Rebecca Chaiklin unravel this complex narrative, the twists and shocking reveals come fast and heavy. But honestly, no plot summary can prepare you for the insanity of Tiger King. You just have to watch it for yourself. About an hour ago, we had an incident where one of the employees stuck their arm through the cage and a tiger tore her arm off. I can give you your money back or I can give you a rain check. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.